Hello class, this is Mom Chell, and I'll be your teacher in creative nonfiction for this semester. Before we begin, I hope that you have already answered the pretest activities on your printed modules. So, let's begin! So, for our first lesson in creative nonfiction, quarter one, week one, our topic will be materializing themes and techniques in fictional works. So, before we proceed with our discussion, let me first give you our main learning objectives. So our main objective is to assist the learners to be able to define theme as the main player in the development of a story as well as to explain its crucial role in a particular text. So big question, theme. What do we mean when we say theme? So if I'm going to ask you, what is the theme of the story? Some of you might give me answers such as magical, historical, romance, etc. So these words actually is not the theme of the story, but what you're trying to give me is the genre of the story. Some of you might give me answers such as don't talk to strangers or treat others as you want to be treated as an example of a theme of a story. Okay, if you give me this statement as the theme of the story, actually, you're not giving me the theme, but rather you're giving me the moral lesson of the story because you're trying to teach me something. So, based on those statements, you're trying to tell me something. You're trying to teach me the difference from what is right and what is wrong. So, some of you might give me the summary of the story as the theme now remember when we say summary of the story it's not actually the theme but it is the plot of the story when we say plot or we define plot a series of events that happened in the story so if you're going to give me the summary of the story you're not giving me the theme but what you're giving me is the plot maybe some of you will give me answers such as love family war friendship, etc. If you give me these words, are you now trying to give me or are you now giving me the theme of the story? The answer is actually no. Because what you're giving me is the main idea of the story. Now, if theme is not the genre, the moral lesson, the plot, nor the main idea, what is a theme? Okay, so what do we mean when we say theme? Let me define theme for you. So when we say theme, Okay, it is a statement or series of related observations about some aspects of the human conditions interpreted from the unique viewpoint of the author. It usually depicts and unifies the central topic of the story. So when we say theme, actually, it is an important idea that is woven throughout a story. Ito yung main idea na nakukuha natin after we read the whole story it's not the plot it's not the summary because it links a big idea about the world with the action of a text so let me repeat myself the theme links a big idea about the world with the action of a text lahat tayo sa mundo may kanya kanyang kwento and sometimes we want to share these experiences through, uh, through our stories as a writer sometimes our basis or the basis of our plot is our own personal experiences now the question is how can my audience relate with my own experiences how can i ask them to read my story so as a good writer you need to think of a theme okay a theme that is universal a theme that when the reader reads your story, they can easily relate to it. That is why one characteristic of theme is that themes are universal. Okay, so if you create a theme, it must be universal. So when you say universal, this can be anything that one may imagine from social issues to sciences to natures and the like. So that anyone can relate remember as a writer your main goal is to attract your audience to read your story how 
by making a connection between you as the writer and them as your audience. And the very first thing that you need to do is to create a theme, a universal theme wherein they can relate your story to their own stories. So let me give you an example. So we have here the story of Harry Potter. So we all know that the story of or the plot of Harry Potter is about a young boy who survives death by his parents sacrificing their lives against Lord Voldemort. So we can say that maybe the theme of the story is mother's love for their children or father's love for their children because we all know that they sacrifice their love for their children, Harry. But question is, is it universal? Can everyone connect with your theme? Maternal or paternal love. Let me repeat myself. When you say a theme, it must be universal. Lahat kailangan makakonek sa, te- sa tema mo. If you give me mother's love for their children or father's love for their children, is it actually universal? Big question. Lahat ba tayo nasubukang mahalin ng magulang? Lahat ba tayo na- naka-experience ng maternal or, faterna- or paternal love? That's a big question. So, not everyone experience maternal or paternal love. Maybe majority of us experience these kinds of love, but not everyone can connect to that story. Kasi hindi naman po lahat, okay, experience maternal or paternal love. So, mother's love for their children cannot be the theme of the story because it's not universal. Not everyone can connect. So, how can we make this statement better? How can we make it something or how can we make a theme from this one that is universal wherein everyone can connect? So why not make it love surpassing death as our theme? So let me ask you again, is it universal? Can everyone connect with this theme, love surpassing death? So each and every one of us experience this kind of emotion, love. Okay, love from our parents, love from our siblings, from our friends, from our teachers, from our opposite sex. And we all know that when we love someone, we try to sacrifice for them. So, sacrifices because of love. So, given that as our main theme, love surpassing death, we can at least assume that everyone can connect. Therefore, I can say that it is universal because everyone experience love. Now, moving on, let us define themes and morals. Most of the time, we confuse themes with morals, vice, uh, vice versa. Let me define morals. So, the moral of a story is a very specific lesson. Usually, it is a life lesson you are making about the theme. So, the moral came from the theme of the story when we say theme okay it could be a lesson but it doesn't have to be so the co- it is actually the concept of your story so i repeat your moral lesson came from the theme of the story i re- kasi when we say theme it is universal so moral is specific you get the moral lesson from the universal theme that you have given to your audience so what about theme main idea and summary what is the difference so again when you say theme it's a lesson or a message to take out of the story when you say main idea it is what the story is all about and when you say summary it is the event of the story or simply it is the plot let me define it further by using this table and giving you the definition or their definition and giving you some examples. So let's start with main idea. When you say main idea, the main idea of a story is generally what the story is about. It is a brief one sentence summary of the story or the plot. Take note of that. When you say main idea, it is a brief one sentence summary of the plot. Kasabihin mo dito kung ano yung nangyari, ano ang mangyayari, ano ang gagawin ng main character mo. So, let us focus with the story of Little Red Riding Hood. 
So I assume that every one of us are familiar with the story of Little Red Riding Hood. So what do you think is the main idea of the of the story Little Red Riding Hood? Ano yung nangyari? Ano yung ginawa ng main character para magkaroon ng story? So the main idea is Little Red Riding Hood gets herself into danger by disobeying her parents and revealing too much information to a wolf on her way to her grandmother's house. That's the main idea. Anong ginawa ng character? Ano yung mangyayari sa kwento? Now, what is a moral? When we say a moral, okay, the moral of a story or the lesson teaches the principles of right and wrong and it's often explicitly stated at the end of the story. We usually get the moral at the end of the story. It teaches us something. Okay, it teaches us the difference between what is right and what is wrong. So let us go back with the story of Little Red Riding Hood. So we can say that the moral of the story is that we should never talk to strangers or we should okay we should obey our parents okay it teaches us something okay it gives us the principles of doing what is right we of always doing what is right now topic so a topic is an important subject that is presented or revealed within the story usually the topic it's just a one word so, don't confuse yourself with the main idea and the topic. Main idea, one sentence. Summary of the plot. When we say topic, it's the subject. Ito yung tungkol saan. Okay, so that's why usually it's just a one word. So, maybe, or we can assume that the topic for Little Red Riding Hood is about disobedience, intuition, trust, fear, family, gender, appearances, etc. Okay, now let's move on with our main topic, theme. What do we mean when we say theme? So the theme is a significant idea or statement that the story is making about a topic. It focuses on the deeper meaning or message that the reader is meant to consider. The theme is often or the theme often makes a statement about society, human nature, or the human condition. So, the theme for Little Red Riding Hood, we can say, is that appearance can sometimes be deceiving, or trusting intuition is the key to survival. So, take note of the definition of a theme. We get our theme from the topic, and we get our moral from our theme. We get our main idea from the topic we get our theme from the topic but we get the moral story from our theme so don't confuse yourself with the following terms main idea morals topic and theme to make the long story short when you say main idea it's a one sentence summary of the story moral it is what you get after you read it's what you learned the topic is a one word summary or one word um but, uh, it's a one word summary of the story and when we say theme okay it is the most significant statement that the story is trying to make about the topic so let me give you another example so actually this example is already written on your printed module so i'll just explain it to you so the story of a 15 year old boy in a rural high, rural high school who has not made the basketball team knows the experience of disappointment. But so does a 70-year-old a grandmother whose family does not come home for the holidays. So given this statement, we can assume that maybe the topic or the one-word topic is disappointment. Both the young boy and the grandmother experience the same thing, disappointment. Now, okay, each character might, details the, might, might detail the events on how they move from disappointment to contentment. That's the plot, series of events. So these stories have similar theme. Even though the details of the stories are expressed differently, either scenario could explain or could express the theme of overcoming disappointment and hurt, and yet each in a unique way. So both of them, the child and the grandmother experience disappointment. That's our topic. 
So, when you try to read the story from the beginning, using the plot, okay, from the exposition, rising action, climax, down to your denouement, you could see the development of the character. So, from disappointment, how did they overcome those, disappoint those disappointment? Okay, so, different stories, but they have similar theme. Overcoming disappointment and hurt. Now, Okay, how can we identify or how can we easily identify the theme of the story? We can identify the theme of the story by following or by using this big question. So you ask yourself, okay, if your teacher, the next time your teacher asks you the theme of the story, so that you don't, you won't give them answers such as uh, romance, magical, or uh, you give them the summary of the story, and so on and so forth. So for you to easily understand the theme of the story, you ask the following question. First question is, what did the characters learn? How did they grow and change? Why did the characters act the way they acted? Or what's the difference at the end of the story? Or what stays with you after the story is over? You use these questions okay, as your guidelines to look for the theme of the story so let me show you a short video uh it's actually a okay a west african folktale by jennifer Ann hansen and the title is anansi the spider so i'm going to show you this video and then let's try to answer the big questions is a story about Anansi the Spider, a heroic trickster from West Africa. Anansi was clever, but he wished to be wise. Wiser than everyone, in fact. He decided that he'd take all the wisdom he could find, all the wisdom in the whole world, and gather it all inside a little clay pot. But he didn't like having it in the house, this pot of knowledge. What if our kid knocks it over, he asked his wife, Aso. What if someone comes over in the night and steals it? Who's coming to steal your pot, Anansi? she asked. Nobody even knows you have it. It's not safe, Anansi cried, and he decided to hide it. I'm going out, he said. Don't follow me. Whatever, said Aso, who went back to doing something that was actually useful. Anansi wandered through the forest, lugging this enormous clay pot of wisdom, never aware that his little son, Ntikuma, was following close behind. Not tall enough said Anansi, looking at a cliff. Not deep enough, he said, frowning at a canyon. Aha, said Anansi, when he came to the prickly thorn tree at the edge of the forest, near a little stream. Now this will do just fine. Anansi had many legs, and he was very strong, but even he could not climb the tree and carry the pot of knowledge at the same time. He scrabbled up the tree, then slid back down again. He wiggled up the tree then slid back down again. He clambered up the tree. Hey, Dad, Anansi's son called out. What? What? I said nobody follow me. What are you doing here? Anansi cried. You should tie the pot to your back, Dad. Then you can use all your legs to climb the tree. He was right, but it didn't matter to Anansi. I'll teach you to give me advice, you little miscreant, Anansi yelled, shaking his fist. The same fist that held the handle to the pot full of wisdom. It went sailing into the air as time seemed to slow down. Oh no, said Anansi. Oh no, said Anansi's little son. And the pot smashed open right there in the stream, carrying all of Anansi's carefully gathered up knowledge into the ocean, sending it out to the whole world once again. You are in so much trouble, Ntikuma, Anansi said, clambering back down the tree. And then he said, ow, 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 because in his haste he had poked himself on the thorns of the tree. His son took off running for home, and Anansi raced after him. And as they ran, it began to rain. And as the rain came down, Anansi stopped running and began to walk and think. Ntikuma's plan would have worked after all. When he at last caught up with Ntikuma, he apologized for losing his temper. What was the use of all that wisdom if I can still be outsmarted by my little son, he said. The two of them embraced. And because of Ntikuma's timely interruption, a little bit of Anansi's knowledge 
lives in us all today. Okay, so let's try to answer the big questions. Okay, so let's start with the first question. What did the characters learn? So the characters learned that, or Anansi learned that, even if he had all the wisdom in the world, a child could still have a better idea than him. Second question, how did they grow and change? So based from the story, we all know that at the end of the story, Anansi apologizes for losing his temper. We all know, or from the beginning of the story, we saw that Anansi is a self-centered uh, spider. Okay, but at the end of the story, he changed a lot. He apologizes for losing his temper. Another, why did the characters act the way they acted? So what do you think the reason? So, Anansi was greedy. We all know that. That's why he tried to collect all the wisdom in the world so that it was only him. Okay, who would possess the greatest wisdom of all. That's why... We had the story. That's why nangyari yung kwento. He tried to keep it to keep those wisdom to himself alone. Next, what's the different or what's different at the end of the story? What happened? So we learned that at the end of the story, or we get something. So everyone gets a little bit from the pot of wisdom. Why? Because when Anansi accidentally, okay, when he accidentally um drop the pot of wisdom each of every one of us received the uh, the wisdom coming from the pot now okay what stays with you after the story is over we can see that this is the moral of the story remember something that is left so the moral of the story is all of us have has have a little bit of anansi's wisdom inside of us so what can we assume? Okay, with this story. So what can what do you think is the theme of the story? Remember it must be universal. So maybe the theme of the story is anyone can have a good idea. Kahit bata, kahit matanda, babae or lalaki, based from the story, okay, we can say that anyone can have a good idea. Remember, Anansi was outsmarted by his own son. Even if we have all the knowledge or all the wisdom in the world, he was, he was still outsmarted by his young son. We can also say that okay, uh, the theme is wisdom is inside all of us. So each and every one of us, we possess wisdom. So that's it. Okay, thank you for listening. So that's the end of our first session. See you again next week. Hashtag handang isip, handang bukas. Tara, ML na tayo.